ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this holy mass, and within the week, we shall be praying for the following intentions. For the repose of the soul of Bill Fry, requested by Stan Fry. For the repose of the soul of Mary Charles Mapima, requested by Stan Fry. <coughs> Thanksgiving for God's blessings, requested by Tuvia Urox, Christian, and Jeroneshe Lakhan. For the repose of the soul of Bill Fry, requested by Stan Fry. For the repose of the soul of Thomasina Green Cotton, requested by Stan Fry. Birthday blessings for Carol Robinson, requested by Stan Fry. Blessings on the 84th <coughs> birthday of Naomi McDowell Bird, requested by the McDowell Bird and the Harris families. For the repose of the soul of Sister Anne Hannah, requested by Stan Fry. 80th birthday celebration for Esther Cam, requested by her family. For the repose of the soul of Thomasina Green Cotton, requested by Stan Fry. Birthday blessings, 84th, requested by Naomi McBurd and the Bird and Harris families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ to our Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood behind them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among all the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. In accordance with this exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Are rising. 
And we have to know and understand what each one of those risings mean to us. Scripture tells us that the apostles saw the ascension. They were there. They were right there with him. They saw him. They saw Jesus rise. But as they looked up, what they probably thought was, this is a last event. And because they saw him rise bodily in his human form, they simply thought that he was gone forever. He left them, left them alone, no longer with them. And I submit, in my humble opinion, too many of us today think that very same thing. We think that Jesus is no longer here. He's gone. But that is far from the truth. The truth is that Jesus is more fully with us today than he was when he was physically with us centuries ago. And when we become fully aware of that fact, I think we come to understand both the relationship and the meaning of his resurrection and his ascension. And with that in mind, we want to preach this morning from the question, do I understand the meaning of both the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus? And let's look first at the resurrection. Resurrection means simply to be raised from the dead, to be raised from the grave, to be brought back to life. At every liturgy, we profess in the creed that Jesus was crucified, he died, he was buried, he descended into hell, and he rose from death, was resurrected from that tomb. In making this profession, we're saying that we believe that Jesus defeated death and the devil. And that after being physically dead, he came back to life. He walked with, he talked with, he was seen by people. Death and the devil could not keep him down. But when we profess this, we must understand that Jesus' resurrection was in essence a physical resurrection. His human body becoming alive again. That means to us that it is a physical imagery with a spiritual message for each and every one of us. I submit to you that it means that in our humanity, while we are alive, physically on earth, if we sin continually, if we simply disobey God, don't obey Him, turn away from Him, do our own thing, then we become spiritually dead. But if then we, like Jesus, then give our lives fully to God, totally in love, in thanksgiving, and obedience, then like Jesus, God will spiritually resurrect us, bring us back to spiritual life. And then we, like Jesus, can be a living example to others that they too can do the exact same thing. And we can then thankfully proclaim, once I was blind, but now I see. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive. I have been spiritually resurrected by my loving God. That, I submit, is the message of the resurrection to us. Now, let's look at the ascension, and it's me. In today's first reading from Acts, after Jesus' resurrection and just before his ascension, he was meeting with his apostles, and he was telling them what he wanted them to do, reminding them of what he had taught them, what he had shown them, what he wanted them to do when he did leave. And Luke tells us this, as they were looking on, he was look, lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. As they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them from his sight. Why a cloud? Why didn't he just rise? Why did he have to be on a cloud? I submit because again, we're being, being given physical imagery from which we are to get a spiritual message. If you read scripture, the physical image of a cloud is found both in the Old and the New Testaments. For example, in the Old Testament, God led, led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt by day in a pillar of cloud. His presence in the cloud, simply before them, leading them the way he wanted them to go. When Moses climbed Mount Sinai to stand before God, 
and received the Ten Commandments, God descended to him in a cloud. In the New Testament, at Jesus' transfiguration, God said, this is my beloved son, telling us that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. Jesus is the promised Messiah. Jesus is his son. And how did he do it? He came down in a cloud and spoke from that cloud. In each of these occasions, what's the spiritual meaning of a physical cloud to us? I submit to you that it is God showing us that in his love and mercy, he himself will come down in a physical form that we can see and hopefully understand. In each of these occasions, God is showing us that he in his love and his mercy is with us, will come down in a way that we can see and hopefully understand that he is with us. But because we're not spiritually worthy to look at him, he comes down in a cloud. That shouldn't bother us at all. We should focus on the fact that he comes down. If we're spiritually aware of his presence in the cloud, his message to us is then that we will know, like the Israelites, that if we give ourselves to him, he will lead us out of slavery to sin and the devil. Like Moses, if we answer his call to lead others, he will make his presence known to us. Like the transfiguration, if we make an honest decision to change our lives, to leave sin and the devil alone, give ourselves fully to him, he will come down in a cloud and tell us that we are his. We are his child. We too can be transfigured. In the second reading, Luke tells us that after Jesus has, had ascended and was out of sight, the apostles were just standing there, looking up. Just standing, not saying nothing, just standing, looking up. Why? Submit to you is because they saw the ascension as an end. They're probably thinking that Jesus has left them. He's gone. They don't have him anymore. What are they to do now? He's not with them. And while they were standing there looking up, two angels appeared, and those angels did two things. First, they asked the apostles a question, and then they told them something. The question the angels asked the apostles was this. Why are you standing there looking up at the sky? Why, why are you just standing there looking up? Although this is said in the form of a question, I submit to you that the angels are really telling them something. They're saying, look into yourself. Do you realize what you have been experiencing for the last three years? Do you realize that you have walked and talked and lived with Jesus? That you hopefully have understood what he has prepared you to do when he does leave. And they're telling the apostles, don't stand around like you're lost and doing nothing. Get moving. You've been chosen by Jesus to go out and spread his word, establish God's kingdom on earth. Go out, do what he taught you to do and what he showed you to do. You are now to go out and lead others to him. And then the angels tell the apostles something. They say, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way that you saw him going up. He's going to return in the same way you saw him going up. What are they telling the apostles and us? I submit they're telling us that just as Jesus ascended, he's coming back. Make no mistake about it. He's coming back on what we call Judgment Day. And he's coming back for one specific reason. To either tell us to go to heaven, ascend, or tell us to go to hell depending on how we lived our lives on earth. And on that day, when he comes back, all who have physically died, everybody who has ever lived on earth will be resurrected, brought back to life. And all who gave themselves to God, followed Jesus, followed his example, obeyed his teachings, his commandments, they will ascend. 
But those who didn't, who did their own thing, turned away from God, they will not have sin, but they will descend to spend eternity in hell with the devil. In today's gospel, Jesus tells the disciples and us, he's not gone. He hasn't left us. He tells us in this way, he says, behold, see, look, understand, behold, I am with you forever. Submit, he's telling us that he's no longer physically with us, but that's not important. What he's telling us that he is spiritually with us. He is with us spiritually in our church. He is with us spiritually in Scripture, in the Word of God. He is with us spiritually in the Eucharist. Hopefully, He is with us spiritually in our hearts and in our minds. In today's second reading from the Ephesians, Paul says this. He says, May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you a spirit of two things, wisdom and revelation. What does this mean? I submit for your consideration, it means that if we give ourselves to God, if we follow the teaching and the examples of Jesus, then when it comes to wisdom, God will give us spiritual knowledge the spiritual knowledge that directs us to follow and obey Him. Revelation, that in some way, as in a cloud, God will somehow spiritually reveal Himself, <laughs> physically reveal Himself to us, so that we hopefully can understand that He truly is with us. Understand what He wants us to do and how He wants us to serve Him. He will give us the gift of His Holy Spirit to teach us and lead us. In the first reading, Luke says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You will receive power, spiritual power, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you then will become my witness. I submit to you, Meaning to us, it is only when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can develop our spirituality. It's not something we can do ourselves. It is only when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that we will have the spiritual wisdom and the power and the ability and the knowledge to defeat sin and the devil. It is only when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can become a witness to others of the presence and the reality of Jesus. It's only when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that God will reveal Himself to us in a way that we individually can understand. It's only when we have been resurrected from a life of sin and disobedience to God that we will be able to ascend when Jesus comes back. And as we usually do, we ask in your own time, your own way, Seriously ask yourself the question, do I understand the meaning of both the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus? I believe
He will ascend into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His, his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of the sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the spirit of the ascension of our Lord, let us offer our prayers and petitions to God. For the church, that we continue to carry on the commission Christ gave us, gave to his first disciples, preaching, teaching, and baptizing throughout all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations lay down their arms and resolve never again to use instruments of death to resolve disagreements and discord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who suffer from systematic persecution, oppression, and discrimination, that justice and righteousness may overcome sin and evil, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are welcomed into the church on this in this Easter season, as they go forth to make disciples in the way that they live their life, their faith-filled lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be blessed with wisdom and hope, so that we may be effective witnesses to our communities of joy and consolation of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions of this holy